Death, hell, and the grave. He took the sting out of death. He took the victory from hell. The Bible says that because of what Jesus did, now we can say precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of the saints. Now we can see death as a transition. Now we can have hope in this life for the life to come. And this is what the resurrection of Jesus means to us. Precious, precious in the sight. Didn't understand this. That's why sometimes when we go to funerals, it's home going. Just, you know, we're, 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 we're leaving here, but we know we will see them again. We're leaving here, but we know we will be resurrected. Our bodies will be reunited with our spirit. That's what I can understand. We realize that for the believer, this isn't the end. We realize because Jesus died and was resurrected, this is what we will experience as well. That's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm he who lives. How many know we serve a living Savior? Amen. I'm he who has been resurrected. I am the one who now has a high priestly ministry. I am the one, hear me now, who's praying for you every single night and every single day. I am who you're living for. I am the one who has given you the privilege of living eternally with me, not just this in this life, but the life to come. I am the one who will change your body. Either through death or through the rapture when Christ comes back and you will be just hearing as I am. I am he who lives. I was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. That's what the resurrection means. He says, I have the keys of death and hell. And I mentioned to you when I was in Sunday school class, I had this, this poignant question. There was another instance where I was riding in the car with my, my father. And, and you know, you know our little kids are be very inquisitive. And I said the same thing earlier to him. And I said, Dad, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And he began with as much word as he was able to explain to me. Again, this is a big theological question. And he said, well, son, you know, we, we all have to die. But, but he said, but as a believer, we have hope. We have hope. I don't know about you, but I look forward to the day when I can see my, my uncle one day. Praise the Lord. I, I, look, I look forward to the day when I can see my grandparents one day. I look forward to the day when I think about sometimes coming to church and Sister Liz, you know, who she would always sit in the same place. I look, I look forward to the day where I can see her again. And he explained to me, he said, son, we, we, we have a hope, we have this blessed hope that one day we'll be just like Christ. He gave us the example. He, he gave us a picture of what would happen in our lives as well. Not only that, that's why the Bible says that the same power, hear me, this is where it's relevant for us even today, not just in the sweet by and by. He said that same power that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in us. This has no so much significant, not significance, not just in the life to come, but for what we go through right now. The Bible says that the same power, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, lives and abides on the inside of us. The same power that brought back Jesus from the dead. Hey, that's why I can walk around with my head up high. That's why I know depression can't break me. That's why I have power over sin. Because the same power that raised Christ from the grave dwells in me. And so my father proceeded to tell me, this son, we have hope. We have an expectation. We have a living hope. We know as we leave here, it's not the end. We'll go immediately into the presence of the Lord and we will be changed. We'll have a glorified body. We, we will be like he is. He is the first fruit. Then we have the second and the third fruit. We will follow his path. We will follow his example. And that is what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means for you. And that's what it means to me. The Bible calls it a blessed hope. How many of you know we, we have that hope and we have that expectation? And this is what separates him from any other God or deity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, I thank God that he is alive today. I thank God that I'm somewhere I'm today. I thank God 
that as, as I go through challenges and I go through trials, I can go to him knowing that he's praying for me. I thank God that I serve a Savior, you know, who is very much alive. He is active and working in the lives of his people today. I thank God that he walks with me and he talks with me and he, he leads me by his spirit. I thank God that still today he orders our very steps when we're in a bind, when we're in trouble. We can always call on him and he will always answer. I thank God that he gives me expectation and hope today, but not only today, but also the life to come. And that's what his resurrection means for us. And that's why we're celebrating this mighty act today. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is how we base our faith. This is what our faith means to us. And this is what we share for others as good news on what they can do to receive this living Savior into their lives as well. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all of the glory. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive. We thank you as you revealed yourself to John. You gave him evidence that you are alive. Thank you that we understand that you're the same Jesus and you still work and move in our lives today. Over 2,000 years has passed. But you're still working in our lives. You're still giving us breakthroughs. You're still speaking to us by your spirit. We thank you. That's why we can declare precious is in your sight are the death of the saints. Because we know immediately when we leave here, we go into your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we understand that for the believer, death is never the end. But it's a transition that we can spend time with you. Lord, you declare in your word that you go to prepare a place for us. He said, in my house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And we thank you, Lord, for having this revelation in our minds that now our life has purpose. Now our life has meaning. Now we understand that we have an opportunity to spend eternity with you. And God, we thank you that because you're alive, we can still expect to have breakthroughs. Because you are alive, we still can expect you to heal us. Because you are alive, we still can expect you to provide for us. Because you are alive and working in your people's situations and circumstances, we can still expect you to answer prayer. Because you're here today and you live in our heart by faith, we still can expect you to open doors for us that were once closed. We still can expect to have a relationship with you. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're not moved by what we see, but we're moved by what your word says. And your word declares that you're alive today, willing and ready to have a relationship with each one of us. So, Father, we thank you for this hope. We thank you for this expectation. We thank you, Lord, for this, this confidence. We thank you for this revelation that you gave to one of your servants. Verifying everything that was said about you. That we serve a living Savior who works and moves in the lives of humanity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. I'm going to share this with you. I, I was I'm working, I was working with a group of kids and we had a young man who passed away. He was like 12 years old. And I'm talking about as a pastor, you talk about being put in a situation that is difficult. <laughs> Christian family, a young boy, 10, 12 years old, passed away, freak accident. And a situation like this, I would not wish on my worst enemy, my God, you know, 
prepared to sit down to bury it. And if I were represented any other religion, it would be different. If I represented any other God, the conversation would not be the same. I do believe as Christians, we have to really get a hold of God's word so we can really understand what we believe in, understand what the gospel says to us as it relates to our life. And as I comforted the family and other pastors and leaders were there talking to the community, we were reminded that as Christians, we're in a different situation. Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Bible says we have an eternal hope. Let me ask this. That's the comfort we have as believers. That's the victory that Jesus accomplished through his resurrection. That's the hope that we can have moving forward. We tried to encourage the family that one day we, we, we want to see him again. We wore wrist bracelets and, and t shirts and, and reminded the young fellow and his family. I said, Don't worry, we, you know, I, look, I look forward to seeing you again. That's, that's what the resurrection means to us. How many of you know one day we're going to see Christ again? That's good news. There's a gospel artist that sung a song. He said, You know, when I get to heaven, don't, I don't need to see Peter. Don't need to see John. Don't need to see Moses. Thank God for them. But I just want to see your face. That, that resurrected Savior with that glorified body. I'm going to say some more. I encourage you, those who are students of the Word of God. There's a book entitled Divine Revelation of Heaven and Divine Revelation of Hell. There's a man of God. He received a vision of how God took him to heaven gave him a vision of what it was like. It, it, gives you, it gives you insight to what the resurrection really means. And it's significant. It's a it's powerful, again, it's a theological discussion. But when we leave this side, we will be changed. We will be just like Jesus is. In the name of Jesus. If you're here today, you've never made Jesus Christ the one you like. We want to give you this opportunity at this time. If you've never been saved, you've never been born again, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to you. If you never have made Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, we want to give you this opportunity. In addition, we want to pray that the same boldness that many of the patriarchs of old had, the same boldness and confidence that even John had. Again, this man was exiled as a result of his faith. He, he wouldn't stop telling the story about Jesus. He would not stop telling people that Jesus was now alive. My prayer today is we have that same confidence. We have that same boldness in our homes, on the job, as we go throughout the day. We won't be ashamed to proclaim his name. We won't be embarrassed to let people know that, hey, we, we serve the Lord. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of the King. That God will give us that same confidence to stand up for him, to be a light in the midst of darkness. Father, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for your presence this morning in the person of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, through this text we see that you are alive. You'll never die. You're alive forevermore. God, we thank you that your word declares you took the sting out of death. That's good news. Father, we pray as we leave this place that you give us boldness, that you give us confidence to declare this good news. Father, that you'll give us the spiritual tenacity to be living sacrifices for you. Holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. We have the same boldness and confidence that many of the apostles had 
who were willing to suffer shame for your name. And we make a conscious, willful choice that we're going to live for you, living for the one who died for us and rose again. That we're going to commit ourselves to you. What, what better time to recommit, to rededicate ourselves to you other than a day when we celebrate the day that you got it. Help us, Lord. To be solidified in our faith. To have this hope moving forward. That we too, our bodies, will be resurrected. We too will see our loved ones again one day. We too will see your face. And we thank you for this boldness. We thank you for this confidence. That we'll live for you and proclaim your name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, how we love you. Let's worship, let's worship. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. We love you, Lord. Oh, how we How we worship, oh Lord, oh how we love you, we love you Lord, oh how we praise you, oh how we worship, oh Lord, oh how we love you, we bless your name. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love you. Yes, Lord. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Again, for coming in. As a reminder here, Lighthouse Christian Center, we want you to have a passion for Christ, purpose for living, and power for you. Make sure you take a picture before you leave. Make sure you get some snacks and treats for your children. God bless you. See you again.